the headlines, Ghanaians urge to report unexplained eyes, nose and skin bleeding. Ajoa Safu reacts to criticisms on her absence from official duties. Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park to receive facelift. Minority condemns military brutality on illegal miners in Obuase. President urged to leave appointment of CEOs of state institutions to boards. And DCOP Kwesio Fori bows out after 35 years in police service. Welcome to Graphic Online's News in Brief. Ghanaians have been advised to immediately report to the hospital when they experience unexplained bleeding through the eyes, nose, gums, ears, anus and skin, according to the Head of Health Promotions at the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Abuaji Da Costa. These are symptoms of the deadly Marburg virus. Dr. Da Costa, who made this known in a television interview on Tuesday, July 19, said signs of vomiting with blood, high fever, joint and muscle pain and headaches are also symptoms of the virus. He said the COVID-19 safety protocols are still relevant to fight the Marburg virus and urged Ghanaians to be vigilant. Some of the safety protocols for COVID are still relevant and what I will encourage the population to do is to continue to wear their face masks, uh, wash hands frequently with soap and running water and here the social distancing is so vital if you can and uh, do not handle the bodies of people suspected of dying of Marburg. People should be vigilant and the hygiene protocols are very, very important. But the most important thing is if you have on a split, bleeding through your eyes, nose, gum, ears, anus and skin, please report it immediately. If you are vomiting with blood, please report it. If you have high fever, please report it. Joints and muscle pains, please do report it. The Member of Parliament for Dom Kwabinya, Ms. Sarah Joasafo, who has been absent from her official duties for some time now and has come under increasing scrutiny, says she remains committed to the new patriotic party and the Akufuadu administration. In a Facebook post to congratulate the newly elected national executives of the NPP, she said she has become a victim of a sustained political witch hunt by certain elements in the NPP and in parliament to achieve their own goals. Adra Safu, who doubles as the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection, together with two other MPs, have been investigated for absenting themselves from parliament without permission beyond the stipulated 15 sitting days. The minority members in parliament have condemned the use of excessive force in the fight against illegal mining following alleged assault of some illegal miners in Obuasi in the Ashanti region. On Friday, July 15, there were reports of suspected illegal miners arrested by the military on the premises of Anglo Gold Ashanti being subjected to severe torture. Addressing a press conference in Parliament on Tuesday, July 19, 2022, the ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, John Abdullahi Dunapo, said they were informed that the suspected illegal miners were subjected to severe torture leading to human rights abuses. He said the minority members have called on the Ministers of Defence and Lands and Natural Resources to, as a matter of agency, institute an impartial and credible investigation into the act. We find this incident despicable. We find this incident unfortunate. And we find this incident highly reprehensible. Even more disturbing is the fact that the Akufuado led government has remained mute following this incident. This is a heinous crime meted out to ordinary Ghanaians. You and I would agree that the level of unemployment is at an all time high. And so even as we claim that we are fighting against illegal mining, it ought to be done in accordance with law. The Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park is receiving a facelift under a World Bank project which will include a new presidential library, a training center, a new restaurant and a VVIP launch. The $3 million project is expected to be completed within nine months. Cutting the sword for official commencement of the project, the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Dawal said other facilities to be built include an artistic freedom wall, a music and light fountain to boost night tourism at the park. He said funds for the project is provided under the World Bank project, which is expected to create additional 50 direct jobs when completed. The president of the Institute of Directors Ghana, 
Mr. Roxin Dobigan has reiterated calls for the boards of state-owned enterprises to be allowed to appoint chief executives. Currently, the President of the Republic appoints CEOs, but Mr. Dobigan says it is a bad practice and it does not promote good governance and productivity. Mr. Dobigan was responding to questions by Graphic Online on the sidelines of a stakeholder workshop on the draft bill to regulate and promote dictatorship and good governance in Accra on Tuesday. Mr. Dobegan said when boards appoint CEOs, it enhances productivity and reduces needless friction at workplaces. Best practice demands that boards must appoint chief executives. And that is a fight we have been uh, advocating for. It's a call we've been calling on stakeholders, including the President of the Republic, uh, to help to review some of the requirements in our statute books to allow both exercise their role of appointing chief executives. The reason why we see conflict and fights in organizations, particularly the public organizations, is that you have the President of the Republic of Ghana appointing chief executives instead of the board appointing the chief executive. So the chief executives therefore owe allegiance uh, to the president as opposed to the board. If the board appoints the chief executive, the chief executive would recognize the board's authority. But unfortunately, because the boards don't appoint the chief executive, they think that they are sometimes above the board and therefore do not take the board seriously as they should be. And that is where the conflict comes. Before we go, the Public Affairs Director of the Ghana Police Service, DCOP Kwesiofori, has bowed out of the service after 35 years. He retires on Wednesday, July 20, 22, on attaining the mandatory retirement age of 60. Unlike many, Kwesi Ofori joined the police service from the rank of constable, rising through the ranks to the level of deputy commissioner of police. He bows out as the director of police public affairs. A pullout and farewell ceremony will be organized at the National Police Training School in Accra at 10 a.m. to honor him. The 35 years have been so interesting. Um, as a young boy, we joined the police service. I uh, went through a lot of training, a lot of you know, upgrading ourselves in terms of education, in terms of professional education, among other things, and we rose from the rank steadily up to the rose from the rank steadily from constable up to deputy commissioner of police, uh, of which on the 20th. My career will genuinely come to an end. Graphic Online's News in Brief is brought to you by Graphic News Plus. Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly, and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Visit us on graphic.com.gh for further information. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. Thank you for watching. For more news, please visit our website, graphic.com.gh or follow us on Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube and Twitter at GraphicGH. I'm Ama Amankwa Befi. Subscribe now.